After some clear nights, winter came back. Hey guys, today I want to talk about one of my longest projects I ever worked on. In fact, it was the longest project I ever worked on. And I used my new 90mm Apple and in total I imaged during 11 nights and I had about seven and a half hours of total integration time in the end. Maybe you already watched my last video, this one. And in this video I talked about my first long-term project or the first one I finished. And that was the Galaxy NGC 2903. I started several long-term projects. In total, I started shooting on uh, four deep sky objects. This video will be about the first finished one. I also showed you my result. Uh, it was the first time I used Nina. It was the first time long-term project, it was the first time um, uh, post-processing and pics inside and so on. And I was quite happy with the result. And today I want to talk about the second target I selected and that's the nebular. And the target actually, or the, the deep, deep sky object is actually, um, or the selection of this object is actually, to be perfectly honest, based on a mistake. And, or let's say, problems um, during yeah, handling of Nina, of the Nina software and so on. Currently, I'm imaging from my home base and here it's uh, not very easy to find uh, suitable objects. So I have to deal with uh, certain inconveniences. So as you can see in this video, I'm dealing with um, surrounding buildings. Um, I have quite many trees here. And I also have um, light pollution. So behind this building, uh, there's a traffic light, and of course, it's very bright and so on. So I cannot go very much in the in this direction to do imaging because otherwise I will have quite low contrast. So I have a quite narrow corridor uh, where I can select my targets from. In my last video, I also talked about uh, vibration caused by neighbors and the street, which is not far away from here. And I'm also dealing with a quite bright moon, of course. But now let's speak about the actual target. So first, uh, my idea was to capture the jellyfish nebular. So I always wanted to image the jellyfish nebular. Uh, but I also wanted to um, test my dedicated astrocam. So currently I'm using the CWO SI385 uh, one-shot color camera and this is a, actually a dedicated planetary camera. Of course, as I already showed you, uh, you can also use it for deep sky objects and so on. But since it has no uh, active cooling, um, I have a quite a uh, high amount of noise and also the sensitivity is um, not so high compared to a dedicated uh, deep sky uh, object uh, camera or even a mono camera and so on. So since this uh, jellyfish nebular has a magnitude of around 12, which makes it a quite dim object. Uh, I was very curious to see uh, if I can really image this with this camera and so on. So as you can see, I have no guiding camera. And so I'm quite limited to um, the exposure time, right? So this was very interesting. And if you don't know what the magnitude means, um, in the past I did a video about, um, yeah, brightness uh, of uh, stellar objects and so on. So if you're interested here, uh, please watch this video. And you can also like it, of course, and you can also subscribe, but okay. <laughs> okay, so I looked into Stellarium to find out how the image will look like in my um, camera. 
So this object is actually too large uh, for my camera and the telescope and so on, but I was still interested if I will get any signal. So I made some test photos. So I entered the name in Nina and then the telescope slew to, um, to the target and then I, yeah, I did some test shots. Okay. And here the problem began actually. As you can see, I did not see any nebulosity and so on. So I thought, yeah, maybe the camera is not able to really give me a signal because the object is too dim and so on. I only could see yeah, two bright objects or two bright stars and another other uh, and other stars. But I was interested to see if I'm in the right location. And so I did online plate solving, so you can upload your uh, raw image, your FITS image. Um, you just enter a few uh, information about your telescope, the pixel size of your camera and so on. And yeah, it will, and the program or the website will show you where you are in the sky, right? And here I found out that I was not even close to my target, the Jellyfish Nebular. But this was my mistake, because in the end I found out that um, I did not enter the correct uh, location in EQMod. So if you are not using a software to, in order to control your mount and so on, um, what you will need to do so as uh, drivers, so SCOM drivers, uh, this is for communication between your mount and your computer. And I'm also using a, a software uh, which is called EQMod. So the EQMod uh, location or the coordinates in, in the EQMod was not the same as in Nina. And that's why I was, yeah, I was not close to my target I wanted to image. So then I saw that I was close to a nebula which is called the Monkey Head Nebula. It's NGC 2174. And I already saw many um, yeah, beautiful images in Astrobin of this object. So I used this function in Stellarium to get an idea about the field of view and if it will fit into my field of view. And I found out that this object is yeah, almost perfect for my setup, for my Astro gear. And I thought, yeah, it's almost perfect. Uh, it's maybe a little too large, but I will anyway try it. So I did. So for me, this nebula does not look like a monkey head, but more like a flame, I would say. Okay, so that's very nice. But what I also saw on the right hand side of this picture uh, is that the structure is getting more fuzzy on this uh, side and it will be not so easy to post process because um, yeah, the distinction or the contrast between the background and the nebulosity is quite low. So I was very interested to post process and pics inside. And after I searched for this object on Astrobin, I also found out that there is actually more nebulosity uh, than you can see in Stellarium. And I was very interested if I really can see this uh, yeah, thin layers of nebulosity using my uh, non deep sky object uh, camera, but by my, my planetary camera. Um, I was very interested to see if I can really um, yeah, image and sense this uh, very thin nebulosity. So using this target, I also wanted to test my Astrocam. I wanted to find out um, how sensitive it is and what's possible uh, using this camera and so on. So I did my setup and I started shooting. For this target, my camera gain was set to 260 and the exposure time per subframe was 50 seconds. So as I said before, I imaged over a period of about 11 nights and seven of them were really almost perfect. So almost no moon and the deep sky object was quite far away from, from the street lantern and so on, or the traffic light and the street light and so on. 
So there was a quite high contrast, but this changed, unfortunately. Actually, my intention was to really uh, even extend this project and so on and to do more imaging because I wanted to have this uh, thin nebulosity and also the yeah quite fuzzy structures and so on. And I knew uh, I will need a uh, very, very long total integration time using my planetary camera since it's not so sensitive. But more and more I found out that it was not possible because the contrast was too low um, because the deep sky object was too close to the moon and I had absolutely zero chance to have any um, yeah to get any signal and contrast and so on so I stopped this project I was quite happy with the about seven seven and a half hours of total integration time and yeah, so I did some post-processing. It was the second time I used PixInsight. Before I want to show you my final result after post-processing and PixInsight, I want to show you uh, how my stacked image looked like, the unprocessed stacked image. So as you can see here, first I focus on the core structure of the monkey head nebular. And then I also wanted to collect further images, further subframes of the upper part to get um, this, yeah, to get even more uh, signal of the nebulosity, as I can see here. And now I want to show you my final image of the monkey head nebula NGC 2174. To be honest, I'm very happy with the final image of the monkey head nebular. I was also very happy to see the yeah, quite fine structure in the lower part of this image. And yeah, I like it. And I also learned a lot about the limitations of this planetary camera. Of course, with a dedicated deep sky object camera or even a mono camera, uh, you will get even more signal, of course, especially from the fine uh, structures, from the yeah, thin layers of nebulosity and so on. But I think for a yeah, planetary camera, it's very nice and I was very happy with it. And I would be very interested to know about your opinion on this object and maybe you also have some tips for post-processing of this uh, nebulosity and some maybe some functions in uh, PixInsight I can uh, apply to this image. And with this I want to finish this video. Um, thank you for watching and yeah please give me a thumbs up if you like this and yeah. So see you next time, clear skies.